Good morning. I'm Steve Smith, and you're watching In and Around Lake Forest. Uh, this is a bi-weekly broadcast put on by the Lake Forest Chamber of Commerce, where we spotlight local businesses and other people of prominence so that everybody in the community can get to know who is next to them, who they might want to do business with, who they might want to develop relationships with. Today, we've got a really good guest, and I think he's going to bring a lot of value to today's program. His name is Cedric Campbell. And uh, let me just read a little bit to you about him, and we're going to learn a lot more as we get him on the broadcast here. Uh, Cedric Campbell has been a member of the Rotary since 2017, and he served in many positions, including president of the Rotary Club of Irvine. Um, he's now going to be the, uh, the president of the new Rotary Club here in Lake Forest. He's the founder, and he'll be the current president. Uh, he's got a strong focus on solving issues specific to mental health, um, suicide prevention, elderly care, uh, supporting veterans, empowering youths, and growing a local business. When he's not working in the Rotary, he has his own business. He's a broker and owner of Equity 123 Lending which is a residential mortgage lender based in Lake Forest. Uh, they've also got operations in Washington, Colorado, California, and Texas. He also has a podcast called Business Beyond the Balance Sheet. So it's gonna be interesting to hear kind of what the message is with, with that podcast that he runs. So let's welcome Cedric, learn about his journey, and more importantly, why he decided to bring the Rotary Club to Lake Forest. Cedric. How are you, sir? I'm doing wonderful. How about yourself? Hey, thanks for being on the program with us today. No, I'm excited about it. Okay, cool. You're, you're kind of looking up. You need to kind of look forward if you can. Oh, that's where I'm at. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I just want to make sure people are connecting with you. Um, all right, so listen, I just kind of teed you up with a little bit of about the bio that you provided us. Okay. Um, and I know we're going to be talking about the Rotary Club and, and, and your journey to get it here in Lake Forest and kind of what you're hoping it will do for the community. But just so everybody has kind of a working understanding, tell us all, what does the Rotary Club do? So, so I will, I'm going to change the narrative a little bit because it's, it's more of who we are as opposed to what we are and what we do, because who we are is a group of diverse individuals with the common goal of servicing others before servicing ourselves. So we're out there, we're a service organization. And when I look at our own club, um, we're made up of folks that are business owners, business professionals, retired individuals. Uh, we have some students, we have some college students, we have some teachers, community leaders and retired individuals. And again, all about doing one thing and that's servicing those uh, above ourselves. Hence our whole motto is service above self. That's right. who Rotary is. Um, what we do, Steve, is a whole different story. And what we do really, i give you a little background. You know, there's, there's 48,000 clubs in about 200 countries that we serve. So it's a fairly wow. large organization. Uh, so. if, we, if, if we were in about a, million, about a million four people. So if we were a company, we'd be about the size of Amazon, just to kind of give you an idea from that standpoint there. What we do is every club is going to do something a little different based on the needs of their community. So mm -hmm. Maybe people in Africa are the African club is doing things to try to give greater access to water for their community. Um, we have organizations that are out there focusing on uh, human trafficking here in the U.S. Oh, my gosh. We have so many different needs that are out there, everything from human trafficking to teen suicide prevention to understanding uh, elderly care, um, uh, supporting local businesses. And so what we're trying to do is trying to fill and provide services to support all those different interests. And that's really what and who Rotary is. All right. So I know Lake Forest now has an official Rotary Club. Tell us a little bit about what it took to get that going. How, how, when did you start and what did you have to go through in order to be able to get Rotary established here in Lake Forest? Yeah, so I'll get rid of all the administrative stuff that you have to go through to start a club because it's a it's a process. But right. so so I don't know if you knew it or not, but I was the uh, I've been with Rotary for about five years, and I was the president most recently at the Rotary Club of Irvine, which is a phenomenal organization. They have about 65, 70 members out there, very strong in the Irvine community and so on. 
Um, when I my term expired on July 1, essentially, so that gives you your time frame. On July 1 of this year, um, I thought about it and said, you know, I happened to live in Lake Forest uh, when it was El Toro in the early 80s. Yes. Uh, and there's 84,000 people here in this community, and we don't have a Rotary Club to support any of the needs that are here. And this community has needs. So I turned my attention completely and said, I'm going to start a club. And um, I went out there and our first event was the uh, Lake Forest uh, 4th of July Parade. Um, we had Wonder Woman out there passing out candy to the kids. We had a banner out there. And what was really cool is, is we had a lot of people as we walked by with our banner saying, hey, Rotary, you know, my grandfather was a Rotarian. My, my dad oh, okay. was a Rotarian. So we knew there was a need and an excitement about that. Um, Steve, we started in July 1. It typically takes a year plus to be able to actually build a Rotary Club, sometimes even longer. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm proud to say that it is, you know, five, six months into this program. We now have 24 members that are willing and able and excited about helping out. And it goes back to my whole point about personality in Rotary. They're excited. We're ready to grow. We want to grow more because the more people we have, the more need that we can support. All right. And I know at the last mixer that we were at, um... I don't know who it was that asked you this, but you were telling everybody where the name Rotary came from. I thought that was kind of interesting. Why don't you tell our viewers, where did Rotary, the word Rotary come from as the, as the moniker for this organization? Yeah, exactly. And actually we still carry that on today, at least with the Rotary Club of Greater Lake Forest in, in where we meet. So in 1905, a, an attorney by the name of Paul Harris out of Chicago uh, and a few of his other partners, business partners and just business people that he works with, uh, decided to go out there and build a club that would help other individuals in their in their community from that standpoint in Chicago. And so rather than meeting at one location, they would rotate locations from each of the partners, oh, okay. hence the word Rotary. Interesting. Well, Steve, why that's important to us today is because our club really believes in that same concept. And so rather than us meeting at a single location, what we do is we rotate to different local businesses to try to do two things, try to drive traffic to that business to support the local economy, right. and bring a little more freshness because it is fun to go to different locations. Oh yeah, so absolutely. It's exciting. So that's where Rotary came from. All right, so one of the things I noticed when I was looking over your bio was all of the different areas that Rotary tends to try to get involved in or, or, or serve a need for whatever's in the local community. And, and there's quite a list there. So how do you guys figure out, especially when you're coming into a new city like Lake Forest, how do you figure out where the focus needs to be? Because obviously, you know, if you're talking about suicide prevention and mental health and elder care and supporting, I mean, you can't do justice to all of that stuff at the start. So how do you decide where to start? So, so the great news about this is I don't make that decision. The members make that decision. So as an example, if a member has a real interest in um, Alzheimer's education, or we have members that are very much focused on you know, youth protection and youth suicides and so on and so forth, that's where we're going to focus our attention. And when you have 48,000 clubs and you know, 1.4 million members in 200 countries, there are subject matter experts all over the world that can help us be able to use that. So that's that, that's the beauty of the resources that are behind Rotary, uh, whereas maybe other clubs would not have that or other associations would not have that. Okay. And does anything that you guys do here in the local venue, whether it's Lake Forest or Irvine or any one of the other cities that uh, Rotary has a presence in, uh, from a financing standpoint, is that all generated locally or does the the international Rotary contribute in any way to help you you know, further what, whatever service you're trying to get up and running. Yeah, that's that's the beauty. Uh, honestly, um, number one, I'm not asking our members to give us any monies at all from that standpoint there. We want to reach out to the local businesses if they see an alignment in the needs, for instance. But we also have probably one of the greatest supporters behind Rotary International, and that's the uh, Gates Foundation. So mm -hmm. what they do is we have a foundation uh, where we're able to... Um, put monies into a certain project. So I'll give you an example. Uh, there's a group of clubs that have gotten together to create a global grant, a global program to save the coral reefs throughout the, throughout the world, um, okay. at Sri Lanka, for instance. And what they've done is they've pulled all their monies together. They've gotten support from the Rotary International Organizations through grant fundings and programs. 
to build an ecosystem that's in the ocean so that the marine life can get fed through the ecosystem and not disturb the coral. So it gives the hmm. chance for the coral to start reviving. Wow. So yes, the, the funds are, are coming from you know, uh, local charity organizations. We're a nonprofit organization, so right. obviously that, that makes sense. Um, we do have grant funding where we put monies in and the, the Gates Foundation will double, if not triple that at times. And again, we can pull in out of 48,000 clubs, little bits of pieces of dollars from all these different clubs to come up with one grant or one global program. Nice. All right, so you've been in it for five years. You got your start over in Irvine. Um, can you can you share a story with us about some particular project that they undertook that you know just went over and above, and you really really felt good about getting involved in that area of the community? Yeah. So let me um, let me bring it close to home and tell you how I got involved in Rotary because there are just so many projects out there and, and they mean something different to every single person out there. Whether we're building homes in Mexico or whether they're out there doing a dental and eye clinic in Mexico or whether they're in Honduras, you know, putting together a, a, a school or whether we're doing something as simple as putting in a mini library at the Gates Elementary School here in Lake mm -hmm. Forest or whether we're writing thank you cards at a happy hour event to our military or our first responders, I'll share with you how I got kind of involved in it. I really uh, have been exposed to Rotary for about 20 years plus before I even got joined it. Um, an associate of mine had taken me to a, I think it was a Susan B. Coleman um, cancer run that was oh, down yeah. in the Costa Mesa area, South Coast Plaza. Right. Um, and our goal was to basically uh, tie blankets. Now, if, if you remember like in the scouting programs, they take two fleece blankets together and they tie them up and they would give those to people that were going through chemotherapy and so on. And it was a really hot, miserable day. Mm -hmm. I remember being in the tent. I remember tying blankets, not knowing what I was doing really, and just tying blankets. And so a person walked up to me at the table and said, could I have one? And she looked a little bit um, like she'd been going through some challenges. And I handed her a blanket. I didn't really know if I was supposed to or not. If right. it was charges. I handed her a blanket and she just began to cry and weep. And I didn't understand why. And she said to me, she said, this is going to make such a difference to me when I'm in chemo because it is so cold. Mm. And I thought, my goodness, if I spent two hours doing some menial tasks like tying a blanket and it made such a difference to this person, yes. I have a lot more time and energy and skill that I should be able to do more. And that was the point that made me become a Rotarian. All right. So for other people that have maybe walked around and bumped into other Rotarians or maybe been invited to another club's monthly meeting, however they might have been exposed, if they're watching this now and they're saying, you know what, if Rotary is here in Lake Forest and I'm a resident, and I have a business here, maybe I should get involved. What's the process? Yeah. So we try to keep it really simple, Steve. I mean, there's no, there's no secret handshakes or you wear funny clothes. Or I was kind of like hoping that. you had a secret handshake. I've always wanted well, We're, we're going to let you wear a funny, a fuzzy hat, you know, whatever you want to do at that point in time. It's your call. Hat, yeah. Yeah. But we make it pretty simple. So what we do is we do ask you to come to um, three meetings, either three meetings or three projects or three something. And the reason we do that, Steve, is we want to make sure that we're the right alignment for you. So there's so many clubs, right? So there might be a better club for you than fitting here. Maybe you need to be at a breakfast club or a lunch club. We're an afternoon club from that standpoint there. But after you've been through three meetings or three projects, uh, we simply ask you to go online, fill out a short application, hit join now, and then you'll be contacted by our membership chair about next steps and so on. So the, the process is very, very simple. And presumably you make it through the vetting process and you now become a member. What are the expectations? I mean, if somebody has, knows the Rotary, they, they've seen the name before, but they've never actually been a, a member in a club, obviously there's probably things you should know that you're signing up for. What, what should they know? You know, the, the one thing I will say that um, we're looking for, it, it's, it's not really your profile. It's really your character, which is, you have a willingness to give back to others. Mm -hmm. That is the primary thing. We're not a leads club. I mean, you're going to do business with people that you do business with because you like them and you're going to right. like the people in Rotary. So we're not a leads club. We're not expecting you to do anything from that standpoint there. We do, don't do have any expectations that you're going to be there at every single meeting, but we do have an expectation that you're going to be there when we have a project to be able to come out there and contribute somehow. Because if you think about it, 
the only reason we're here is because there's a need. Yes. And so if you've got two hands and, and you can make a difference to somebody, like we talked about that blanket exercise, that's what we're looking for. So no, no major uh, meeting requirements. We, we do like you to have meetings because that's where you start developing the relationships. That's where you start developing the value of being in Rotary. Um, we, 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 we don't have any um, requirements that you bring somebody or we don't keep attendance or anything else like that. If, if we're the right organization for you and it fits within your spiritual alignment or whatever you want to call it, right. you're going to be there. Yes. You're going to want to give back. Yes. Interesting. Okay. All right. So you mentioned one of the members now it has kind of a penchant for Alzheimer's. Um, if you come up with some other things that you feel would be a best use of your time, your talent, your resources here in Lake Forest, what is the process of, of kind of finding out who else is in that space? Because I'm, I'm sure if you can piggyback or assist things that are already in progress, it's, it's a better deal than trying to start some effort from scratch. Um, you know, I'm not sure I'm 100% in agreement with the, the latter part of that, because it's, it's those untapped opportunities that we don't even know exist that open up doors for other resources that we might have in, mm. in different countries or in different locations and so on. It's really interesting. We meet once a year as an international organization, and we sit around round tables, and we sit around in, in conference rooms, and we talk about, you know, things that are going on and, and, and projects that you're working on that could be really helpful for me. Uh, where I need your support at. Um, and, and I'll give you an example. This is this is a true example. We were just meeting in Houston, you know, last year or earlier this year, I should say. And I had a chance to meet with people from Ukraine and people from Russia and to hear about those, you know, con conflicts and so on and so forth. And then the beauty of it, both of them agreed to, to peace as opposed to conflict. Um, but where where would I find that anywhere else but in Rotary? So to that point, if there's a certain disease or an element or something that's out there, we need to know if that's your passion, because we're going to do everything we can to find those resources to address those passions. And if those passions aren't perhaps here in Lake Forest, because we don't have you know polio or something like that in Lake Forest, we will find some place where your efforts and energies are better spent. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so one of the ones I was looking at here on your list was empowering youth. Give us an idea. What does that what does that exactly mean? What, Man, I'll tell you what. I could spend 30 minutes on our youth program because so let, let's 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 take a look at just some um, reference comparisons. Every single organization that's a nonprofit service organization, whether it's Kiwanis or or any other, you know, scouting, whatever it's going to be, has a great heart. They're out there to give and so on. And there's no doubt about that. We need those organizations where I think where I really believe Rotary makes a difference is we've created a path from, let's say, middle school to adulthood. And that's a big difference. So our youth program is we have a, a program called Interact. And the Interact is catered towards middle school to high school. And we teach them community service programs. We help them get their community service hours. We teach them about leadership skills and so on. With the goal that when they decide, let's say, to go to, we even, we even take them up to Idlewild for a few days and teach them leadership skills, uh, selected individuals. We pick up the tab for it. Uh, they get a chance to interact with other high schoolers. They get a chance to develop their leadership skills, their community skills, and so on and so forth. Um, when they decide, if they decide to go to college, we have a path called Rotaract. And so those individuals who are in high school can then go to, let's say, a college or university of their choice where there happens to be a Rotaract club in there. And basically, it's a mini Rotary organization where they have a president, where they have a, a secretary, where they have a whole infrastructure in place where they can learn leadership skills. And at that level, we teach them things like, you know, job interviewing and, and um, you know, social media and uh, career pathing and a lot of different things like that. So that's one of the big things we have with our youth. And if they decide that they don't want to go to college, well, we have a vocational avenue for somebody who wants to go to trade school or somebody who wants to be a beautician or be a mechanic or something like that. So our youth program is really designed to teach the value of, of community service at a young age, carry them through the system through college and then into adulthood. And I'll give you an example why that's so important. I want you to think about this. You just got out of high school, you're 18 years old roughly, and you're going from here to let's say Purdue University. You don't know a single soul out there, right? right. Yeah. But you're able to pick up the phone, you're able to call the Purdue Rotaract organization and simply say, hey, I'm a new student, I'm coming in from California, 
I'd like to join your organization. Can you help me get acclimated? Can you help me make my life a little easier when I go into a world that's freezing cold? I don't know anybody. I don't right. know what it's like, and I'm leaving home. And right. that's I'm the beauty. I'm going to have to care for myself. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's uh, I look. I, I I've always believed that in terms of life skills, we as a society we do a poor job of helping people. You know, young kids transition from middle school, which for me was like 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 serving time in prison almost because it was just it was a really drama ridden environment for a school. But then you go into high school, things are more organized, you get into sports, you know, you, you kind of find a purpose. But I don't know that we've ever done a really good job of helping kids navigate that path. So when they get out of high school, whether they go to college or take on a trade or do something else, they actually feel like they have a direction. Yeah. So, so that, that Purdue story was my son. So then he got out of college and got a job in Wichita, Kansas. Okay. Right? So he picked up the phone. He called up the Rotary Club in Wichita, Kansas, let them know that he was part of Rotary in Southern California. They loved it. They helped him find a safe location, a good apartment. And now he's part of Rotary up there. He's also got some golf buddies that he never had before. That is an incredible opportunity to cause success, where if you don't have that path, you run into a lot of vulnerabilities and challenges and so on. And so I think that if I could put anything on it, I think that our youth program and the passage from middle school to to adulthood is probably one of the best in the world. That's wonderful. I mean, and I I don't I would imagine you know kind of saying this without any proof that there's probably not too many commit, uh, communities in Orange County or any place else in California that that couldn't benefit from something like that. No, I totally agree. I, I totally agree there. And I, I tell you, one of our members was in high school going down a wrong path. Uh, she joined uh, the Interact Club and started an Interact Club in her high school. Uh, she got involved in something called RYLA, which is R-Y-L-A, which stands for Rotary Leadership um, uh, um, Award. <laughs> Rotary Youth Leadership Award, thanks. And she became very much involved in it. She actually is a Rotarian now in her adult life because she said, if I didn't have the Rotary Act program or the Interact program when I was in high school, right. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be where I am today. Jeez. All right. So here's another kind of an off the wall question, but I mean, you've traveled around (laughs) and I've certainly traveled pretty much throughout the entire United States, either on business or things like that. And oftentimes, especially in the middle part of the country, you go into towns and right at the entrance of the town, it'll have a big arc and it has all these icons, these big plaques on it of all the, the, you know, the, the community organizations that are present in that town. And you might have Lions and yeah. you might have Kiwanis and Rotary and I don't know, all the other ones that are possible. Is Lake Forest going to get something like that at some point? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, this is a city council conversation, I guess. But um, I, I, I would certainly love to have that as a vision, whether it's a giant watch, you know, clock tower right. or something that says Rotary is here. One, I think if we did that and somebody was looking at maybe three different communities to move to and they saw that common thread of of goodwill and leadership and, and community service and support, that would be a great icon to maybe make them have a decision that this is the right place for them. Yes. Um, well, you, you've, you've put together a great roadmap and, and I would love for us to get there. Um, you know, we started on July 1, my friend. It, you know, we, we've got a ways to go. There are clubs that have been around for 100 years. Um, there have been clubs that have been around for 30 years, just, just sort of the north of us, you know. Right. So uh, we'll get there, Steve. And I, and I truly believe so when we went on the when we went on that parade, the Fourth of July parade, um, that was our first exposure, and we had all those people screaming and yelling about Rotary and their grandfathers and their, their dads and so on and so forth. I knew there was an excitement. There's eighty four thousand people here, and I know we can get those folks pulled together and do exactly what you just said, which is get Rotary presence right here in the Greater Lake Forest. Interesting. All right, so I know that we've had a couple of like little small get-together events between you know the now Rotary of Lake Forest and the Chamber. What's your vision for how those two organizations should be working together? Yeah, I think I think that's a real plus um, actually, uh, and I'm excited about that. So you know where where the Chamber is really focused on supporting business, right? right. Helping them grow their business through legislative relationships, through marketing and networking, and so on. You're focused on the business. Rotary is focused on their business as well, but more on the need side of the community. 
And so if, if we're working together and you've got these great connections out there and um, we're able to reach out to those untapped businesses, they can help fill those needs with either funding or people or whatever it might be. Conversely, where we're able to help out is that if there is somebody that knows something about Rotary, but they don't know a lot about the chamber and they see that we have a relationship there, there's an opportunity for people to become greater in the chamber okay. chamber uh, location there. So I think I think having two organizations being able to cater to the community needs is is incredibly beneficial. We we just have so many untapped, unexplored areas, Steve, for us to work upon, and that's what's exciting about where we're at today. We've got a we've got a palette that's empty that we're painting ourselves, and our two organizations are doing that. Um, I'll give you an example. Something that we're working on for March of 2020 or March 25th on 2023 next year is a great program called the Orange County, South Orange County Youth uh, Scavenger Hunt. It's partnered by the Lake Forest Chamber and the Greater Lake Forest uh, Rotary Club. It's designed for our youth. Um, it, it's going to be at the sports park. So imagine the sports park and maybe a mile track and a bunch of tables around that mile track. And each table has a subject matter expert in the area of uh, bullying, uh, bicycle safety, uh, perhaps um, uh, you know, uh, fentanyl uh, education, uh, teen suicide, all these things that are designed to help our youth grow and make it to the next year. This is a great opportunity for businesses, whether they're nonprofit organizations or local businesses to gain exposure. So on one side for the youth, we're giving education. On the side of the business, we're giving exposure. And mm -hmm. for the community, we're giving great value to making sure that our teens and our, our youth are, are protected as they go through these challenges in life. Nice. Nice. Okay, listen, with the little bit of time we have left, I wanted to make sure I spent, you know, just a few minutes talking about your, your business. Okay. Oh, okay. But before we leave the, the rotary topic, is there anything that you, you want to mention that I didn't serve up a question for? Yeah, you know, the one thing I would say is, you know, we've talked about the, the real strength of Rotary, which is the youth path that takes us up to adulthood. Um, we do meet every Tuesday afternoon, and, and this, is, this is specifically in the afternoon. And the reason why is because we believe that Rotary provides a great opportunity for young professionals to build a resume. If you think about it, like I said, you know, our president is a young woman. She's running 200 countries and 48,000 clubs worldwide, and she's been trained to step into that role and, and gets an opportunity. And there's not many organizations out there that give you that opportunity. So if you're a young professional and you want to go out and really build your professional resume with training and experience and leadership, I think Rotary is probably one of the greatest kept secrets out there that you should explore. And the reason we have our meetings in the afternoon is because we know that young professionals at times can't make breakfast. They can't make lunch meetings. It's just too difficult based on their schedule. So on the way home, stop by, meet with us. Most of our projects are on weekends. So Tuesday afternoon, that happy hour time period seems to be really attractive to the young professionals that are out there. And we have a ton in the Greater Lake Forest. And so that's what I would say, Steve, is that we're really designed to, to help those people who have a need. Everybody wants to help. Everybody has a desire. They just don't know how and where to go. And I think we're that channel that can help them there. All right. So if they're interested, how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, so so go to our website. It's Rotary Club of Greater Lake Forest.org, all one line. Or you can always just send an email to Rotary uh, GLF for Greater Lake Forest, Rotary GLF for the number four life at gmail.com. Okay, cool. All right, so let's move over because I want to give you a, just a few minutes to talk about your, uh, your lending, your, your mortgage lending sure. business. Um, obviously you've done well because it's not just you here, you're, you're spread out in other States. Um, is there anything about what you do that you would consider distinctive versus all the other lending companies that are out there? Yeah. So, you know, whenever I introduce myself, I introduce myself as the principal broker and owner of equity one, two, three lending. And the reason I designate those two is because as a principal broker, I've spent 23 years in, in underwriting. So when I look at a loan, I know immediately whether this loan is going to go or not going to go. And so I give you a quick no versus a long maybe. And that way, <laughs> you don't waste any time. Or I can help right. you to restructure things. But the reason why I always say I'm also the owner is because all the liability, whether it's E&O insurance, 
whether it's you know bonds, whether it's surety, whatever it's going to be, all that licensing falls upon me as a personal individual. I, I'm guaranteed to make sure this is work. So mm. every loan that comes to me, you better believe I'm going to give it the best focus that I possibly can. I'm not a loan rep where I don't have any liabilities. I'm not saying there's any issue. With I have to know rates. I have to know terms, just like every loan officer out there. But the loan officers out there don't own the liability and the responsibility of making sure that the business is done correctly. Um, mm. So I think that's the big difference. But we're in four states, Washington, Colorado, California, and Texas. Uh, and it's really just a, a, a boutique shop. Uh, we're not looking to grow massively. We're really looking to provide, you know, personalized service. And like I said, as a former underwriter, I can look at a loan and make sure that we're carving this correctly so that we win the first time. We help first time home buyers. We help individuals who've got a lot of money at executive levels. They just can't show it because they own their own businesses and so yeah. on. So we are specialists in, in that area as well. And last question, because, uh, you know, I, I have a podcast that I do, and I yeah. noticed you have one, too. Yeah. This is beyond the balance sheet. What is the primary focus for your podcast? So you've learned a ton during your experience as being a business owner. And, and uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring other business owners on this podcast to teach those individuals who are either looking to become business owners or who are business owners who might be struggling to teach them the things that they would have liked to have known five years earlier, right? Mm. So this is really designed for people that are business owners or want to be entrepreneurs or who are thinking of leaving the corporate environment. What are the risks? What are the escape plans? What are the things that you need to be aware of? And so honestly, Steve, if you had that when you first started your business, you would probably, and I would have made half the mistakes that I made. Um, and so it's always great to have somebody that can tell you, hey, be cautious about this, be cautious about that. Think about this, think about that. And that's what business beyond the balance sheet is all about. Oh, that's great. That's uh, super. I think that kind of that kind of topic, you know, benefits so many people who have interest in 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 not wanting to step in the same potholes that everybody else does. So I think that's great that you you offer that up as a, as another resource. It's about servicing others, man. It, it, it's really what the passion is in my heart is just servicing other people. All right, Cedric, listen, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on today. Uh, this has been a great broadcast. I'm glad that you succeeded in helping uh, Rotary, you know, plant their flag here in Lake Forest. And uh, I look forward to working with you and, in, in, you know, in, in collaboration with the chamber and things of that nature. I think it's going to go well. Uh, Lake Forest has, I moved out here in 93, and this is a much different city today than it was when I moved out here. And I think there's a lot of great things to come. And I think the Rotary will be right there helping us get there. Yeah, I agree. I, I've been here since 1980. So it's, it's, I, it, this is my home. You know, this cool. is what I want to do. And I want to do what I can to support the local businesses and all the youth and all the people that are needing their help. All right, folks, listen, that brings us to the end of our, pod, or our, our podcast, our broadcast today. <laughs> uh, we had Cedric Campbell from uh, the Rotary Club of Greater Lake Forest. And we hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you know somebody that could get value out of watching this, but they didn't see it live today, it will be on the Facebook chamber uh, uh, page. And all you have to do is go to the video section and you can, you can either send it to them or guide them to the page and they can watch it. Um, we will have our next broadcast. Uh, the last one of December will be on the 16th. Uh, that's, the, that's two Wednesdays, Wednesdays from now. And we're going to be having uh, somebody from Visiting Angels on to talk about that whole business and and that's exploding you know senior care is an exploding industry so i'm looking forward to having them on so thanks for being here today we look forward to having you at another another broadcast and just seeing you around town and maybe at some rotary events or some uh, some chamber events so take care cedric thanks for being with us today thank you guys appreciate you all right take care